Howdy boys and girls, today I'm going to bring you a game that I didn't think I'd ever actually own and quite frankly I still don't know why I own it, but I do a lot of reselling and shit and I just had a fuck ton of extra disposable income recently so I decided to dive in, I found a great deal, today I'm going to bring you some little Samson. Now this cart, it's damn near perfect, uh, I got it for several hundred dollars underneath uh, price charting level so... I said, hey, what the hell, I I'm going to give it a try. I want to complete a full NES set minus stadium events and some of those basically unreleased games. Uh, so I decided, shit, I'm going to buy this and, you know, if I feel like reselling it in the future, I got it for so cheap that at the very least I'll make my money back. I don't see games as an investment. However, I'm renting this game. We'll just put it that way. So uh, let's give this a try out. I'm only going to put it on easy mode today. Uh, I'm not going to do the full game on hard mode. Uh, and there's a couple differences. Easy mode just has three, I believe it is, less levels. And about six less boss fights. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a brief uh, showing of the game. And we'll go from there. Alright, so this is a little Samson. Uh, there's a couple things that I want you to keep in mind while we play this today. Uh, one, I want you to rate this game or at least I am rating this game completely separate of its price tag. And when I rate games, it's not... Like, the price is a part of it, but it has nothing to do with the overall game experience for me. So what I constantly hear online is, uh, Little Samson, you know, it's kind of fun, but oh, that price tag. Like, I get it. Let's just... Let's throw this game against its peers, other action platformers, and we'll see how it holds up here. So I'm going to get us started. Well, like I said, I'm just going to do easy mode today. And in Mega Man-like fashion, there's four introductory levels. We're just going to go from top to bottom. So we're going to play first with the Little Samson character here. And I want you to keep, uh, you know, keep a critic's eye on stuff here. So, uh, graphics, you know, right away, look very crisp. I am playing on an ABS system, so everything is very bright, very vibrant, very detailed. But, as far as the game goes, just uh, kind of keep a mental note of what oops, of what you're seeing here. It's always pretty standard, you know, but I always like uh, bright and vibrant. It's not muddy and kind of gross like a lot of the LJN games, and I don't mean to compare this to LJN, but they made a lot of mediocre platformers, so you gotta do what you gotta do. Oops. These guys, you can't hit them when they're big, so... Damn it. Ugh. There we go. So each character is kind of unique. Little Samson can climb walls. And some stages he can climb the top of the walls, too. Uh, he's the most basic, average character in the game. He can kind of do a little bit of everything, but... He doesn't do the most damage, he doesn't tank the most shots. Uh, he's not the most useful, but for what we're doing, he's fine. In speedruns, you never see this guy. You know, in speedruns, you really never see any of the characters, though, to be completely honest. You see the mouse, and only the mouse. So we're just going to get past the first level. It's very easy, even on easy mode. Um, well, let me rephrase this. Even on normal mode, the game is not that hard but the introductory levels are just that I mean they're over pretty quick and they only count for a very small fraction of the game so I'm not gonna go too much on these levels and talk too much about them but uh, keep note of a few things one the graphics two the sound and I know you obviously can't feel this but the controls would be another thing and of course, there's some things, you know, like gameplay, um, you know, fun, that kind of shit always factors into it as well, but we'll talk about that more later. So the graphics, you know, they're, they're still good, they're still holding up. I will tell you, it only gets better. It really does. It's actually, to me, this is one of the prettiest platformers on the system, like just this screen alone. 
you know, what does it kind of remind you of? To me, it reminds me a lot of Castlevania 3, where everything is, like, extremely detailed. It's not as dark and gory, obviously, as 3, but in its own way, I think it looks a lot like it. And one very underrated aspect of this game is the golems music. So I'm going to shut up for a minute and just let you listen to it. that I love that soundtrack uh, and if you don't know like, you wouldn't know it yet but these levels don't actually have soundtracks at all all the soundtracks you're hearing are actually from the characters so this sound kind of follows you for most of the game there are a couple levels later on that do have their own soundtracks uh, but on easy mode you only get to see a small fraction of those the game really opens up when you play it on normal Come on. Ugh. Sometimes the controls are a little hard to get used to. They're pretty intuitive, but, I mean, also pretty easy to fuck up. So the mouse is basically uh, throwing little Metroid bombs, which I like, you know, I think it's cool. These little potions here, they're basically like the E-Tank from Mega Man. Fuck that guy. So yeah, these introductory stages are super short. I don't really go on for too long here. Now the game opens up, so... From the way I understand it, and I'd probably have to actually read the manual, but... Uh, Little Samson has this bell, and he uses the bell to summon his friends. And the dragon doesn't want to be stuck in this bell. So we're going to have to beat that out of him. Hey, bastard. So this fight's sometimes, like, kind of difficult, but if you kind of know the cheese strat of just hanging out in the corner, I mean, it's pretty easy. Or if you, uh, shoot when you're on the decline here, uh, he can't hit you as well. That fight kind of until you get the strategy is actually kind of hard. So you just beat his ass in a submission, he went inside his bell, he's gonna shut the fuck up. Or something. And now the game actually starts. So now we're on... You would think of it as like the Dr. Wily stages from Mega Man, but really like this is the start of the game now. The game gets tough, but it doesn't get that hard, especially on easy mode. I know it's kind of a cop-out that I'm playing on this, but... Um, I really just want to show you the game. And, and like... Uh, this is kind of a callback to earlier in the video. What I really want you to do is rate this game. I, I, I want everyone to kind of rank it, to give it a proper rating, give it a proper review, ignore the price tag. Completely just ignore the price tag. When you're seeing this game, when you're playing it, I want you to think about it. So I want this game to get its its proper dues, and it really, that doesn't happen too much. Like, you literally can't get past a review of this game without somebody mentioning the price. I feel like that's unfair, because, like, this game didn't come out at, like, a thousand dollars. This game came out, as far as I know, a sixty dollar game that anyone could buy. You know, it didn't didn't come out with the intention of pissing off the collector market, which, like, wasn't a thing at all at the time. This is a late, or not a late 90s, an early 90s release, but late in the NES library. I think it was 93 or 94, which is, you know, the console is pretty much finishing up by then. There wasn't a whole lot going on still. Ugh, get my ass kicked. Yeah. Ugh. I don't fill him up. The robot's actually pretty good. Oh. 
But the mouse is where the real damage comes in. He's kind of your real boss killer as well. Uh, well, oh, bitch. Yeah, whatever. So now we're gonna get into our first boss fight of the game. Our first real boss, I guess. You can count the dragon, but... The boss fights are all fairly similar, and I actually really like them. I wonder if I can cheese this guy. Yeah, like, look at that. Like, that's so cheap. You can fight this boss forever, or you can just cheese it with a mouse. Change. Actually, I can just yeah, let's just do that. Holy shit! Okay, my bad. I didn't know if you touched him, you actually died. Whoops. Oh my god. See, I learn a little bit of everything. I learn a little bit of something every time I play this game. I actually didn't know if you touched him, you died. That sucks. But, one saving grace of playing this in easy mode, dying isn't that bad. When you play this in hard mode, or not, not hard mode, but normal mode, dying is really impactful. Oh, that sucked. I'm trying to hit this guy. Eh. When in doubt, just beat people's ass with the golem. Fuck you. You yeah. fucking whoop that ass. The golem's awesome. He tanks. <laughs> and one thing that's kind of hard for me. So I always try to th think of, uh, of games in a rating style. Because, you know, that's the whole gimmick of the channel is... You play games or you, or you uh, review them, but then you gotta give it some sort of a ranking afterwards. And platformers for me is always kind of hard. It's hard to compare them to each other in my eyes. Because I can tell you what I like or don't like about a platformer, but how do you compare platformers? Like, how do I compare a little Samson to, let's say, a Mario 3? And then how do you compare a Mario 3 to something like Ninja Turtles? Or Batman, for example. Or Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu. In the platformer genre, I don't know if there are subcategories for the genre, but I feel like you almost have to make them. Like, I guess there are some puzzle platformers and stuff like that, but... When I think of Little Samson, and I think of what game I should compare this to, I have to think... Um, like your power blades. Something like that. Where this game feels like power blade. It's a very responsive uh, platformer where you just kind of go from level to level. There's a boss fight. I mean, it's power blade esque. And there are a bunch like this. You can argue that Batman's like this. Batman, it, I'm trying to, like, how do you classify Batman? It's, it's a very tough platformer. Batman is almost more like Ninja Gaiden in my book. Ninja Gaiden is nothing like Little Samson. You know what I mean? So like, how do you compare all these little platformers together? And that's that's what's kind of hard for me to do. So when I rank uh, games, especially in NES, I just rank it by how I felt after I was done with it. Like, when, I'm, when I complete a game, do I feel like it was worth my time? And that's how we rank them. So, uh, some of my favorite platformers, for example, uh, I love Batman. I, I think Batman is actually one of the most complete games on the system. And I think it's like damn near perfect for what it is. Now I can sit here and fight this boss, but I'm gonna show you a little secret. If you basically off yourself, you get this cool little cutscene and you get a brand new level. Is there a point to it? I have no idea. But I want to play it, so 
I'm doing it. So Samson basically loses his bow and then you have to ride on an awesome looking crap. I think that's pretty cool. So yeah, when comparing this game, I'm comparing this to the Power Blades. So Power Blade is a pretty awesome game. It's not incredible, but as far as platformers go, it's fun. It's really good. And how does Samson compare to that? You know, in my opinion, from what I played, now I played through this game on normal mode. I played through it on easy mode. Uh, and there's no one part of this game that's like overly frustrating. There's a couple things where it needs improvement, but there's not a lot. I mean, there's not... There's nothing like horribly frustrating like a Ninja Gaiden. Where some of the bosses are just like so fucking impossible and the... Uh, um, oh, what do I want to call it? And the, uh, shit, what am I trying to think of? The penalty for dying to bosses in Ninja Gaiden can just be overwhelming. The penalties for dying in bosses in a little Samson are not that bad. Now, that being said, on normal mode, if you die to the bosses on any of your characters that's not Samson, you actually lose that character until, uh, until you game over. Now, there's no real penalties to game overing, like, there's, it's not that bad, you just start at the beginning of the level instead of at the boss itself. But, uh, it's weird. So, for example, if I switched over to the mouse in this guy, now I can't, because, you know, just the way this boss is, but let's say I did, and I died, then all of a sudden I'll be fighting this boss without the mouse. That sucks. Especially, like, on normal mode, the bosses tank a lot. And they're quite hard to kill. Especially without cheese. So sometimes you make one little screw up in the mouse, and you lose them for a boss fight. And then you're stuck trying to do it with the Golem and Samson, and Samson kind of sucks. You know, he really doesn't hit hard, so you gotta be more perfect when you're Samson. With the mouse, you just need a perfect your positioning. With the golem, you can just kind of be a tank. For the most part. I mean, the golem will eventually die, so you can't just rely on tanking this, but... So that's just one aspect of the game that I'm not particularly fond of, and I don't know why they did it that way. I think it's kind of stupid, to be honest. But you only see that on normal mode, and you kind of get the hang of it after a while. It's, it's not the worst thing. Because the boss fights, for the most part, are not that hard. They all have patterns. For the most part, I guess. There's, there's some differences. Some are not always super set patterns. Some are a little bit more random. But, for the most part, they all have patterns. Switch up to the mouse here. See if I can. Hey. <gasps> Golem has the best music, but you use them the less. So you never get to hear that awesome music. It's kind of sad. So that's why I'm playing with the damn Golem, damn it. <laughs> I'm awesome! What? Can't play him. The dragon can fly. When you don't feel like playing a level, just pick the dragon. There's no fault in that. So yeah, as you can see, man, the background's super detailed. It is so detailed. But you can tell there's a level of care in this, and... You know, I was around, obviously, when Nintendo games were out back then, but I was pretty young. I mean, I was born in the late 80s, so... Oh, it doesn't look like that. I look like some old fucker because I have no hair, but what are you gonna do, brother? But... You know, like, a lot of title games, man, I... I couldn't find them back in the day, like... You, you think of... Well, okay, I shouldn't say that. Some places had more games than others. If you go to your general blockbuster, they didn't carry, like, a huge variety of games. But if you go to, like, one of your more local stores, sometimes they just have weird shit in. Like, my local video store had a lot of the all-in-one carts. 
like the 12 in one and just a bunch of other weird shit which was cool like I always uh let's see if I can cheese it Ooh, yeah you fucked so I'm gonna swap out of the dragon here they had a lot of stuff like that my local grocery store had a lot of stuff you consider pretty rare today. They had your Bucky O'Hares, your Snow Brothers. I mean, that's how I played a lot of that shit back in the day. So, I got to play a big variety of games. But, I mean, some games I never saw, obviously, are really late release games. Because stores just didn't carry that shit. And they shouldn't, because... At that point, people are trying to buy... Or trying to look at Super Nintendo games. Why the fuck would you have a little Samson on your shelf? Spend 60 bucks for a game no one's gonna rent. I mean, I get it, but, you know, a game like Samson, which is actually sort of hard to find, I mean, you can always find them on eBay, but, I mean, for how hard to find it is, what was actually the release for it? Like, did it come out in specific markets, or is it just, like, a game of storks? Retailers just weren't interested, you know, like, that's the kind of stuff I'm kind of interested in when it comes, like, to games like this. So this level, many would consider the hardest level. Uh, that's actually a false platform right there. And you can totally step on these uh, when they are black. Which, you totally don't think when you first start this. You're sitting here like, oh, this is actually a lot harder than it is. And it's not. That being said, this little flying guy is a total pain in the ass, and it's actually really hard to grab onto these things. Eh. So the level's hard, but they give you a fair shake at it. They give you one one-up just for entering the level, so it's not on... It's, it's not something you're gonna game over at and just get pissed off and stop playing. It's challenging, don't get me wrong, it really is, but it's not undoable. If I can do it, you can do it. How about that? So right here, I can pretty much switch out for the dragon, but I think there's... One or two more things I gotta grab onto. Look. Oops. <laughs> the dragon can't do everything. At least they let you swap out pretty quick. <gasps> oh my god. Okay. That was a mistake. Wow. Uh, right here, false platform. Eh. Gotta be careful. Wow, that was almost disgusting. Oh yeah, the robot can totally walk on spikes. Cause he's badass. Let's go him. I don't care. He's a fucking robot. I don't care. That's another false platform. Don't fall for that shit. <laughs> the game throws you curveballs. Not too many of them, but when it does, I mean, you gotta be careful. I can get this. <laughs> More false platforms, and then the boss. This boss is pretty easy, he has a set pattern. Just. So yeah, you gotta kinda be careful for him, but. Oops. Do his thing. Both people just kill him. There we go. Samus for the win. Oh yeah, and they give you a password system, so if you do get frustrated, there's always a password save for you. And you don't lose anything, really, by restarting. Uh, those power-ups I got earlier that increased your life bar, you actually find those throughout the game, and you find way the hell more than you need. And they are also random drops in enemies, so you never have to be... Oops. You never really have to be worried about it. 
Oops. Damn it. Ugh. Like, it's not so much like Mega Man where you're actually gonna run out of items if you don't find them early. You don't have to worry about it too much. Oh, I should've switched out. So right there, I could totally get that if I wanted to, but I'm lazy. Oh shit, the ice level? Okay, I haven't actually been to this yet. This is another kind of secret level. Oh. Shit. Eh. <laughs> I haven't. This is. I'm breaking new ground here, folks. So, there is a thing in the previous level. I think if you end the level and Samson has a potion, I think you automatically get to go to the ice level. I could be wrong, but I think that's the case. Shit. Ow. Okay, this has. This feels like an ice level. Let's be real here. Ugh. Ooh. See, like, I wonder if I can get up there, you know what I mean? Like, what, what, what's up there? How, how far can I go? Oh, I did it. Can I get up here? What the? <laughs> I thought the game was going to be awesome and give me a secret or something up there. Oh. When in doubt, it's the dragon. This is easier. Yeah. So, what is happening here? Oh. Already as high as that can get. Again, sorry, this is uncharted territory. This is this is new to me. I don't I don't know what is or what isn't good here. Ooh, that's helpful. my ass kicked. Alright, what is this guy? Okay. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Blossom! Whoa! Ugh. Fuck it. Ugh. Oh shit. He's back. Ugh. Huh. Whoa! Fuck you, man. Jesus. Okay. Whoa. Is he dead? No. Okay. Ugh. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how to beat this guy at all. <laughs> okay. Am I missing something here? Okay, now he's dead. I really like the background here. Like, I think that's cool as shit, constantly flashing. As far as I know, I think those are the only two, like, extra levels of the game. I think, well, okay. Let me clarify, other than when you're on normal mode, there's like, three more levels. But we're not, we're not gonna see those. 
I can guarantee you we are not seeing those. As with the other ones, purely accidental. So yeah, as this compares to games, uh, here's another game like in this genre, like Chippendales, or it's a pretty straightforward platformer. You find some shit, but really it's just about getting to the end and finding a boss. How would you compare this to Chippendales? I like it. I like it a little. Oh, that was cool, weird, but cool. I like it a little bit better. I think it's more complete. Like, when I look at this game, there's not one factor that I would say is, like, incomplete. This looks like the exact game that, that the developers were trying to make. Now, I think the developer was Taito. I know that's... Who published it or whatever. I don't, you know, I'll, like, know all that info, but... I don't really give a shit. I don't think there's anyone else on my team that needs... Check the dragon, but I think everyone's topped off. Like I said, you find a lot of extra power-ups in this game. Oops. I can just be cool. I'll go with the golem. He's awesome. I think I just totally did Link's downstab to me. What an asshole. Alright, let's see what the boss is. I completely forgot. So when in doubt, just beat his ass. Oh, this guy, okay. I remember this dude. Yeah, so we're gonna beat him. Bam! Now I think this guy does a hell of a lot more damage in normal mode. At least I, I thought he did. Oops. Oh shit, I'm actually... Say I'm actually close to dead, I should be a little bit more careful. But, whatever. And we're on the last couple levels here. So, what do we have to do here? Yeah. <sighs> Alright, so one of the effects I really like in this level, I really like that cloudy, it's like a bloody cloud effect mixed with the spider stuff. But you see so much shit on screen and you're kind of like, how did the NES handle this? You know, the system was a lot more capable, I think, than people realize, because, like, a lot of the great games came out super early in the console's life. That's like, you know, developers that, you know, developers like Taito or whatever that, that took all this extra time to come out with games like Samson towards the end of the life cycle, man, they knew everything. Like, look at how awesome this stage is. This fucking rules. It just looks great, and that's... You don't see that in a lot of uh, NES games, at all. Like, you, you know, think of your Ninja Gaiden. Like, it doesn't look that... at all. This guy, I think I can just beast mode with the mouse. Oh, maybe not. Ooh. 
Well, kind of. Jesus. Alright. What a son of a bitch. I just go on the opposite side of him? No. Let's say, we're gonna beat this guy with the mouse, so we gotta do it quicker, I guess. There we go, there's one. Alright, so this boss is gonna remind you of something. It really should. I'll just see what happens. See, see the three blocks? I'll just take a wild guess. Take a wild guess. A giant dragon? Remind you of a boss of a certain game? I think it looks like Mega Man. Oh, fuck me. Damn it. That's a trap with this boss. So we'll get in here. One thing, obviously, you know, we've talked about how cool things look. This dragon looks awesome. Oh shit. I should just remember, like, that I'm on easy mode, so... There we go. So you can just beast mode him, but look at how detailed that dragon is. Like, the level of artistry that went into this, I think is just... It's something to look at, and again, I'm gonna compare it to Castlevania 3. Where you just play that game and you're like, holy shit, this looks great. I like, compare this... Okay. <laughs> this is a fair comparison in my eyes because they're both... I don't want to call them similar platformers, but I mean, they basically are. Compare this with Wolverine on the NES. They're both platformers. They're both in the exact same platforming genre. There's not a whole lot of difference. But just look at the level of detail uh, in this versus Wolverine. I know that's kind of an unfair comparison, but if, even if you compare this to, like, Power Blade, this is more detailed than a Power Blade. Not as many power-ups. In fact, this game has basically no power-ups. But it's not a game that... It's not a power type of game. This is a use your characters to get through the levels instead of use your power-ups to get through it. It's a little bit different. You know, in Mega Man, you use your power-ups to get through it. You have tons of different shit you can do. In this, no, not so much. So a little bit different style than Mega Man, but also kind of similar. Ugh. So yeah, as far as the price point goes, I mean, like, you know, I know plenty of people that would be like, dude, there's no way I'd ever spend this much on a game, and you're a fucking idiot for doing it. Dude, okay, so, I agree with you, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I'm an idiot who has disposable income because collecting and selling video games is my hobby, so, you know, I'm... Before you take the road of, like, man, why would you spend this... Like, I'm a guy with disposable income, okay? Like, I'm not struggling to make ends meet by any means. I'm, I'm doing fine. And my hobby completely funded this. No, no money that I made from my actual real-life job went into this game. This is all just... I felt like buying it, like... I'm working on a couple of complete collections, and this is just what you can do. I have a very focused uh, collection that I'm going for. Ah, oh, you bitch. Hi. I'm fucking kind of cheese this guy. Here's Grim Reaper. I also view him as pretty fucking hard. Ah, oh, damn it! It apparently hit me. Hitbox is a little bigger than I thought it would be. A stadium events is purely a collector's piece. You will never play a stadium events 
at all. There's no point to. It's a piece of shit, and it's just a reskin of a different game. Or I should say, a different game is a reskin of Stadium Defense. Whatever you want to call it. I don't really care. No, I'm doing a really fucking horrible job here. There we go. I just wanted to get a little damage on him before I switched over. But yeah, this game, it's a completely original IP, so it's like... Ah, oh, fuck me. Keep doing something stupid. So yeah, games like this, games like Bonx, I mean, I don't have a problem with those games. If you're gonna collect those to buy them, that is completely fine. Uh, games like your Cultrin 6 and ones that are different from your Myriad 6 and ones Like, that shit, I'm not gonna collect. I don't give a fuck. Like, those are not... One, they're barely video games as there is, because they're just trash, but... Uh, Relabeled games that go for thousands of dollars more is not something I'm interested in. That's not working out for me. Whoa! <laughs> that almost went really bad for me. There we go. Let's just take a try and true. Yeah, as far as, you know, my reselling shit goes, like, that's the discussion I bring up a lot on here, and it all funds my hobby, so... If I want a game and I don't have the money for it, you know, I better start flipping, because I'm not going to pull that money out of my ass. But, now that my collection has grown quite a bit, I don't do that as much, because there's not much fun in just buying shit to sell. I mean, it's okay, but... The big fun of the early uh, process of that was that you'd get a lot of games that you don't currently have. That was awesome. So you get to keep like 15 games and then you just sell off like a couple extras. Now it's basically I'm selling off everything and just buying singles of my games that I still need. So it's not as fun as it used to be. But I still think collecting is a fun hobby and I don't have any problems with it. It's just the selling aspect that's kind of a giant pain in the ass sometimes, so... People are just not fun to deal with at all. <laughs> the amount of times I get pissed off at people trying to sell shit is probably not healthy for me. Uh, what are you gonna do? I do that so I can do this. Let's go with the dragon. Fuck this shit. This stuff looks too hard. I don't want to do hard right now. It's too easy. Whoa. So this is like the first stage finally of different music. And here is the end boss of easy mode. And I think I can just do Samson and just cheese him. If I remember. Yeah. This guy is super easy. His next form is a little bit harder. His next form is essentially the yellow demon from Mega Man. Mega Man 1. But way easier. There we go. Oh. Alright, we'll see what we can do with mouse form here. Oops. It always takes me a second to get the pattern out. Ooh. Actually. I should have saved the mouse for last year. Uh, fucked up. 
And then you just take the golem and you just try to cheat them. So you dodge stuff, golem, cheese, and that's about it. So every now and then it comes from a different side. However, the pattern is always the same. So, one slow, by one long. Oop. Not saying I'm perfect at the pattern, but the pattern is there. You know, let me use. Okay. I talked earlier about these potions. I'll actually use one just for the hell of it. Just so you see it. <laughs> Oops. There's one, and this should do it. Ah, damn it. I didn't get him. So I'll, I'll pimp out Samson, too. Why not? I think that's it. Is there another guy? I don't think so. That's it. Okay. So that's Little Samson. Again, uh, I know I keep harping on this, but the price. I want everyone to play this game. I obviously don't want you to spend a fucking thousand dollars on it, so don't. Uh, and this game is not available, as far as I know, by any means other than either original hardware or emulation. So in this case, fuck it, emulate the game, because they don't give you a chance to play it otherwise. I definitely think anyone who likes platforming games and enjoys a good game like Ninja Gaiden, Batman, your Power Blades, stuff like that, go ahead and, and try Samson. Uh, give it a try in normal mode to start out. Easy mode is actually ridiculously easy. It's almost too easy. Normal mode gives you the full experience of the game. And then there are those couple extra levels that you can find uh, by secret as well. So, uh, Samson for me, I give it a four and a quarter stars out of five. Um, it's very detailed. It's very cool. Uh, I, I just love all the finishing touches on it, the animations. Like, you can tell this is a very complete game. It's not the most fun game in the world. It's not the most challenging game in the world. Uh, so those are the couple things that I have holding it back. And also the music. You know, there's games like Batman that hold on another level because the music is, like, perfect. And the Castlevania games are kind of like that, too. And this is just... It's got some good tracks, but they're not all there. So that's what I give this game a four and a quarter stars. I say everyone should try it out. Don't buy it. But it is what it is. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.